It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. This is an exciting uh, day here at WNAV. I have in the studio with me the USS Annapolis Commanding Officer, Commander Don Whitkey, the Chief of the Boat, Master Chief Rich Garrison, the Navigator, Lieutenant Jeff Denzel. He is a Naval Academy alum from the class of 2009. Welcome back. And Sailor of the Quarter, STS-1, Jared Osterhout. He's a sonar technician. Welcome to the 1430 Connection, gentlemen. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for having us. Really appreciate you all being here today. All right, so the USS Annapolis is our namesake boat. It is a submarine, as I said. It is not stationed in Annapolis. We don't have many boats. We have some, as Lieutenant Denzel knows, we have some smaller boats, some yard boats used for training. You remember those? Sure do. Um, this is a submarine. We can't get submarines up to seven hundred and ten feet. Well, you can you can anchor out, right. which I which I've done before, but unfortunately, uh, we're we're on the on the other side of the uh, United States now, so uh, it's unlikely it will bring in the old uh, Annapolis up here anytime soon. For the people that might be listening from San Diego, how important is the town to you? Oh, it's it's just been amazing. Uh, so the families love it. Uh, it's got so much to do. Uh, we've been there since February, and uh, the crews really really took to it. Um, I would say it's probably probably the best home port in the Navy, and uh, they welc welcomed us, and we really loved operating out there. Uh, and Master Chief, you were no stranger to uh, San Diego. You've been there for no longer than six months, haven't you? Uh, about 16 years of my 24 years has been in San Diego, so I love San Diego. It's been a great home port for me on several boats and short duties. And for those that aren't familiar with the Navy, that's not always the case. That isn't always easy to do, right? Absolutely not. not. In most cases, uh, it's very difficult to do, and... Uh, I've been very fortunate that it's worked out for me, both from shore duty to sea duty to shore duty a couple times. And Petty Officer Osterhout, you are the enlisted member here. Uh, that, for those that don't know, enlisted versus officer. Why don't you explain that? Uh, yes, Donna. So, as a, an enlisted sailor, I think came out of high school and joined the Navy. And the officers go through a, a, a college program, either the academy or some other um, uh, college program to get in. Uh, but on submarines, it's a little different. The divide between officer and enlisted isn't as great as other branches, rather services. Um, it's a lot more respect um, for what we do because we work so closely with them like that. Uh, Lieutenant Dental, you've been to uh, the Naval Academy. You've been in Annapolis before. What is was submarine duty? That was what you picked right from the beginning. Even uh, first started applying to the Naval Academy, the submarine community uh, appealed to me for the quality of the sailors you get to work with, as well as the, the mission sets. Uh, I've gotten to do some great things. I've already done uh, two Westpac deployments on my first submarine, and uh, looking forward to doing my third Westpac in Annapolis soon. All right, so we're going to try to break down, because I am former Navy. I get the vernacular, but not everybody does. Master Chief, what Westpac, what does that mean to people that don't? Uh, for those that don't know, West Westpac is a Western Pacific deployment mm -hmm. uh, where we'll spend uh, about six months uh, deployed in the Western Pacific and uh, doing operations, and we do get to stop at some different ports uh, in the Western Pacific. Uh, I've been to quite a few, and uh, I've done four Westpacs uh, on the boats that I've been in San Diego, and uh, we've stopped at many ports, Japan and uh Singapore and uh, Thailand and a few of those others. And Commander, that one of the things that you mentioned, San, San Diego is being one of the best ports in the Navy. I would think part of that is being able to visit some of the ports that you do versus, I don't know, being on the Med, even though there are some nice ports that you would visit there. Yeah, there's some great ports in the Med too, but uh, I will tell you from a Navy standpoint, the uh, Western Pacific is, is where the action is these days. Uh, the, Navy, the submarine forces made a commitment to move 60% uh, of our submarines to the Pacific just based on the, uh, uh, the mission sets that are out there. And it's important for us as a country to show presence in, in the Pacific, and, and uh, I'm excited that Annapolis gets, gets to be a part of that. And part of that mission, for those that haven't been watching the news or reading papers or listening to the radio, uh, you know, part of that probably is based on our relationship with North Korea. Yes, yeah, so um, the, uh, the Navy's been, been active in that area. I would just say we're we're ready to uh, to do what needs to be done. Uh, we we have a strong strong presence over there. We have some four deployed naval forces in Japan. 
Uh, and that's why uh, Master Chief mentioned uh, some of the port calls that we do. So it's fun for the sailors, but it's also important to uh, reassure our allies that, that uh, the U.S. Navy is going to be there. It's going to be a presence in, in the re region. So uh, every time we go into a port, we usually do some, some liberty activities, as, as you may remember. Uh, I remember. <laughs> uh, but, but, all, but also we, we tend to do some, some exercises with the host nation and uh, do some kind of relationship building there as well. And our, I'm sure our allies appreciate it, and I'm sure every resident of the United States appreciates you being there. You did recently, um, and we just talked about this prior to coming into this interview, last month, this month, it's actually this month, you uh, tested a Tomahawk missile. That had to have been cool, yes. Yeah, so that that was a, a pretty unique opportunity. So the the Navy only does about one of those a year, and we, we were selected to uh, to shoot two Tomahawk missiles on a test range off the uh, coast of Southern California, and they were great great tests. It was a great exercise for for the crew. Uh, it was uh, pretty awesome to see those uh, those missiles leaving the boat. Is there a vibration on the boat? I mean, do you feel what do you, what do you feel? People don't know what it feels like on a yeah, navigator there. It was done its Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the launching of that Tomahawk missile is felt throughout the entirety of the boat uh, the second it goes off, and uh, I don't know how to describe it other than like a very quick thump uh, that, uh, yeah, shakes uh, the rest of the boat. That's the power of the United States right there, that right. quick thump. All right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, more with the USS Annapolis crew. Back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me today is the commanding officer of the USS Annapolis, Commander John Whitty, along with the chief of the boat, Master Chief Rich Garrison, Navigator Lieut Lieutenant Jeff Denzel, and Sailor of the Quarter, STS-1 Jared Osterhout. That's for uh, sonar technicians. So uh, he is down in the belly of the boat listening to sounds. To sound would you ever see yourself as someone that specializes in this, this science of sound? And it uh, is a science. It is a science. No, I didn't. Uh, when I first joined, I thought I wanted to be a corpsman. I thought I wanted to go work with the Marines. And the Navy told me I didn't. Uh, and it's <laughs> honestly one of the best career choices. I did not know I had such an aptitude for the science of sound and water. I didn't know there was a science of sound and water. Uh, but since uh, going through my advanced schools, uh, after boot camp, and since Showing up to the boat on Indianapolis has been the last uh, five and a half years becoming an expert at my job. And I'll tell you, whales sound exactly like you would hear in the I ocean. <laughs> because I'm so into wildlife and I know there's some things we can't talk about. Let it, let's talk about whales. The things we can talk about. Whales. They sound like whales. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it, but it, it was so amazing. The first time I heard it, I was um, sitting at my stack, had my headphones on. And I heard this sound, and my face just lit up with a smile, and I turned around to my supervisor, and I said, I heard a whale. And my supervisor had been in the Navy for 16 years. He says, of course you heard a whale. <laughs> They're in the ocean. <laughs> so the young bright eyes of the young sailor, and I got to see that when I became a supervisor. I got to see that with my junior sailors as well. The first time I heard a dolphin squeak or a shrimp make a Amazing. Let me ask, when you were brand new to the Navy, did you ever ask for a BM punch? <laughs> Because uh, I made that mistake, I'm raising my hand, all of you are, right. yeah. No, I didn't make that one. Uh, I worked construction with my uh, dad before I joined, and I knew that there was no time I knew to think twice it. before someone told you to run and grab a punch okay. from someone. Yeah, I'm the dizzy, dumb, whatever. <laughs> and, Lieutenant, you shook your head. Was that something that you warned about in the Naval Academy? Uh, I mean, there's a slew of things like that. Uh, you know, we have the shaft seals on board, so we talk about feeding the shaft seals, so we don't have the... Feeding uh, the shaft seals. Right. <laughs> Lovely. So not an animal. It's right. Just a piece of equipment. Right. <laughs> or then the mail booth. Is the other the other big one. You yeah. tell the new guy <laughs> we got to go get the mail buoy so yeah. we get like rain gear and a, and a hook. <laughs> <laughs> but back when I was in, there was no social media evidence right. of any of this stuff, so I think this one must be great. I, I need to see this. But, um, yeah, the mail buoy. I forgot about that one. The BM punch is not a tool. It is literally a punch in your arm from a bosun mate. So there's that. All right. So the, uh, you are a Los Angeles class fast attack submarine, the USS Annapolis SS 760. You were launched May 18, 1991, commissioned in 1992, uh, over 20 years old. It's been said that they're supposed to be, uh, these submarines are, uh, have to be refurbished, uh, refreshed every 25 years. You went into overhaul back in 2015. Did you get everything you need needed? Is the boat ready to go? Is it perfect? De definitely. So so I have, I have the luxury. I, 
as as we talked about, I just took over in in March. Right. And, Congratulations and, again. Well, thank you. Uh, so so uh, the, the chief of the bow and pay officer, officer out, were, were there for a lot of that work. Um, so it's heavy industrial work, but the good thing is, is since we've been out in San Diego, we've been able to carry out a pretty quick tempo and spend a lot of time at sea. So the boat's in great condition. Uh, we so although the boat was uh, commis commissioned in '92, we have the newest fire control system, the newest sonar system. So uh, that's the great thing about our submarine forces is we're able to upgrade and stay at the leading edge of technology. So I would say Annapolis is very much ready to go out and do what we need to do. Cool. Okay, uh, women, because I'm a woman and I should ask this and I would be remiss if I didn't, the Navy lifted its ban on women in submarines in 2010, starting with officers. Do you have any females on board? Uh, we do not. Uh, there are a couple submarines on each coast that, that have been selected for that. Uh, also, you've uh, just started accepting uh, enlisted women as well. Perfect. Um, so, uh, Annapolis is not is not one of the ships for that. But as we get more applicants and get more women in the force, the the plan is to expand expand out the number of submarines that have women on board. And part of the reason why not every ship, not every boat has has women on board right now is they, they need to be retrofitted. Your reach is not the same as a woman's reach. In some cases, they need to be retrofitted. And I saw that there is starting to be a push to retrofit some of these boats for women. Yeah, it's it's not so much uh, the equipment; it's really more of the the kind of the hotel services I, I would call it, right? So so a separate separate bathrooms, okay, thing, exactly. thing things like it's really more about uh, birthing. But as far as as far as the equipment goes, uh, it's we have had to make no alterations to to. Uh, to integrate women, it's okay, it's, uh, it's it's gone very smoothly. The Virginia class, which would you get, is the newer class, yes. Yes. The uh, the next generation, so they will be all made with women in mind. Navigate it, navigation. Um, your job is to literally make sure this lieutenant general again, make sure the CO knows where he's going, right? That's right. Uh, so every submerged officer of the deck is the uh, navigator of the watch. Uh, but when we go through uh, straight transits or restricted waters, that's when I will map piloting party and I do the piloting party. Uh, and in the submarine community, again, we sort of dual had a lot of roles. So I'm not only the navigator, I'm also operations officer. Uh, so I'm not prepping charts uh, on a weekly basis, and I'm preparing for our next major uh, coordinated event uh, or mission set. Okay. How often do you not rely on uh, electronics for navigation? Will you still use? Do you know how to use the stars? <laughs> Do you know how to use paper charts? Do you? Yeah, so those are skills uh, that you know, they teach us. I actually you know, started learning all the way back at the Naval Academy. Uh, we do have to shoot an, an azimuth to the sun every day uh, to verify you know, visual bearing error. Uh, I have a sextant on board you know, in the event uh, we need to calculate our latitude the old fashioned way. Uh, but uh, the real answer is that our electronic systems are highly redundant and robust, uh, so we're able to uh, operate independent of the GPS signal for long periods of time uh, based on technology carried aboard the submarine. Uh, so we just stay deep and know where we were, and just kind of check out where we have gone. Um, when you went into dry dock, none of you were there when you went into dry dock. I'm sorry, Master Chief, okay, two of you were on it. How cool was that, the trip over to the East Coast? So we, we were uh, temporarily uh, ported for about eight months in Groton, Connecticut, uh, okay. between when we undocked and from Portsmouth, New Hampshire, for sea trials. Uh, we, we had to stop there for some maintenance, uh, follow-up maintenance, and, uh, and get settled before our transit through the Panama Canal to San Diego. So we did a, we did a full uh, transit down past Florida through the Panama Canal uh, and around to San Diego. Uh, which was fantastic. The crew uh, really got to experience a good long underway. Of uh, we did quite a few things. Uh, in fact, from your time, we also did a crossing the line ceremony. Yeah, uh, when that's we pretty went cool. Through. That's, uh, so, explain what that is. Uh, so crossing the line ceremonies uh, when a ship crosses the equator, we were able to dip below the equator and uh, conduct a ceremony, uh, which we uh, it's kind of a rite of passage and a tradition that we tried to. Uh, nowadays, we don't get to do as many of these traditions as we used to do. Uh, uh, still cards handed out to the sailors? Uh, yes, but, we okay. did. So we, so. we uh, everyone got to participate and uh, got to do some kind of silliness uh, to celebrate the, the, the significance of that, which the Annapolis had never been on the West Coast and had not been across the, the equator on the West Coast. So that was really significant for the whole crew. So the captain actually uh, 
prior to Commander Witty taking over, uh, he was actually uh, what we would call a, uh, a WOG, which is when you, you right. haven't done that ceremony, you're uh, in, kind of initiated into as a shellback. Yep. And, uh, and there's a lot of people, even senior people, who are on the East Coast had never done that before. That's amazing. That you, it so was pretty cool, that huh? Was, that was the prior CEO, though. Right. Yeah. Lieutenant? Well, this was uh, my second time across the line. So on my first boat, I went across the line. Uh, so this time when the opportunity came, I uh, I stood the watch to make sure, you know, someone has to continue driving while everyone else is <laughs> doing the uh, <laughs> silliness of the ceremony. The so and that's it's fine. Navigating through a canal, by the way, isn't easy. Yeah. Is that the hardest? Uh, well, the Panama Canal is actually, you know, Pretty straightforward. Obviously, it's one of the busiest uh, canals in the world, uh, and very large vessels drive through there. So we basically just get in line on the freeway and uh, follow the guy in front of you. And there's ranges on every leg, uh, but there are a lot of legs. Uh, yeah. So yeah it's All right. Not not classified information. If you can, this unclassified uh, question. What's been the one uh, navigational struggle challenge that you actually sweated over? Mm. Uh, so while we were driving to go to the equator, uh, I had actually just relayed as navigator like that afternoon, and so it was like my first night as the nav, and uh, we had a minor issue where some of the soundings weren't properly loaded into the charts, uh -huh. uh, and so they called it a yellow sounding, which is a tripwire event, uh, where we have to like verify that we are in fact where we think we are because uh, that is how you potentially collide with undersea mountains. Right. Uh, and obviously at the equator, mm -hmm. not a lot of boats choose to drive right at the equator because the currents are not great down there, uh, just based on a Coriolis effect. And so it's not well charted. And so that was a uh, real event. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it definitely got everybody's attention. And everybody scrambles uh, to control to figure out you know, where we are. Uh, so we came through it, and you know, the boat was safe. We were never uh, in any immediate danger, but uh, it was definitely got you know, the heart pumping. That was one. Well, everybody needs those things in order to become better, right? Yeah, maybe not like 12 hours into the job, but. Uh, <laughs> And for those that don't know, the soundings alarms, that's based on the ship's depth where you're at and, uh, you know, if you're going to collide with something else. And what is your draw? What, how, how low can you go? Or how, not how low, sorry, that's classified. <laughs> not how low can you go, but yes. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, the unclassified answers on submarines can go greater than 800 feet. Uh, you know, we were probably cruising at 500 feet at that time, but still, like, Having 500 feet of water above you and potentially running into ground, and then you know, that was something that the USS yeah. San Francisco had to go through uh, in the early 2000s. So, obviously, uh, it was eerily similar the circumstance of those events, uh, you know, even the latitudes involved. So, yeah. All right, we're going to take another short break. More on the 1430 connection with the USS Annapolis crew when we come back. I'm in the studio today with members of the USS Annapolis crew, Commander John Witte, Chief of the Boat, Master Chief Rich Garrison, the Navigator, Lieutenant Jeff Denzel, and Sailor of the Quarter, uh, Petty Officer First Class, Jared Osterhout. Uh, so what brings you to Annapolis? Uh, so the reason we want to come out here is uh, to, to keep this tie strong with our namesake city. Uh, so. We're lucky in submarines, as a lot of the Los Angeles classes are named for named for cities, and uh, it's it's really unique that we have a community like Annapolis that that we were able to represent, and and uh, the opportunity came up to uh, to plan a visit out here. So uh, we're visiting with uh, some members of the community. We're going to tour the state house later today, okay. and we have meeting the mayor. I yes, understand. yep, yes. yep. So we're excited about that. Uh, and then uh, we're also doing some events with the Naval Academy as well. Nice. And uh, this is not your first trip to Annapolis. Uh, it is not. Uh, my last submarine, uh, USS Minnesota, we uh, we came up here for for the homecoming game. So mm -hmm. we, we uh, anchored out. This was uh, back in 2013. Uh, it was a good game, actually. Uh, Made they, point? Yeah, they yeah. beat Pittsburgh on a last second field goal. Nice. Uh, so it was uh, it was a great, great time for the crew. So we uh, anchored out out there and we were able to get the crew some some time, some time ashore. Uh, we took about uh, 50 sailors to the football game and 
and uh, so it was it was a great experience. Awesome. And Master Chief, have you been to Annapolis before? I have not. This is my first time, and it's uh, fantastic so far. I'm excited for everything we've got planned for the rest of the trip. But uh, if you don't already know, our state house was the place that General George Washington resigned his commission to become the president of the United States, the first president of the United States. So when you see the state house, there's a little bit of history there. Very exciting. And, and Lieutenant, I know you've been here. You spent four years at the Naval Academy. It's good to be back, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's great. And uh, you know, I was a little concerned, you know, coming back during the summer where, you know, I only have memories of 100 degree heat yeah. index days, but we looked out and, you know, the weather's been great. Been here. And Teddy Ulster also, also had, have you been here before? I have not. No, this is my first time and it's been great so far. Where are you from originally? I'm from Florida originally, a small town called The Land, north of Orlando. Very cool. All right, so what's next on your list of to-dos with the boat? You're heading out on a cruise, I'm guessing, at some point in the near future, and yeah. how long are those cruises? Yeah, so um, so early next year we're going, going on deployment. So uh, the rest of this year uh, we are in the training cycle. So we have, we have some advanced uh, training coming up, and also being in San Diego we do a lot of exercises with surface ships. So we've got an exercise with a, with a carrier strike group coming up to help them certify de for deployment. So uh, we have a lot of uh, local operations, is what we call it. So we'll be in the uh, Southern California operating area, just getting our, getting our uh, skill, working on our sk the skills we'll need to deploy. Being on a submarine is one of the most challenging uh, assignments for families because you are under, you can't communicate with your families for several months at a time. Any of you married? Yes. Yes, Master yes. Chief. How how does that affect your family? Um, it's it's been uh, it's very challenging, and uh, we definitely don't have the same communication uh, available to us um, as surface ships do in general. We we can communicate during local operations on deployment. It becomes a lot more difficult, and uh, but we uh, you have to make sure that your family's ready to handle things on their own. Um, we also have to have programs in place to help, like um, buzz, uh, ombudsman program and some family readiness programs that can help out families. Uh, the squadron has to help out their families when we're away at times, uh, but we have to have that strong support system within the spouses uh, so that they can help each other out, because things do come up on deployment and we can't always call home and answer the questions or you know, get a, receive an email that you can answer, uh, how, how am I going to deal with this problem that came up? Right. It's tough. And it's not just for the married people. There's girlfriends, boyfriends, there's um, moms, dads that can't reach you all or that you can't reach. And uh, just know when I say thank you for your service, that includes your family members as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me today. Uh, it's been great to be here. Thanks so much for having us. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will see you next week.